We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Good morning, y'all. Or good afternoon, or even <coughs> good night, depending on uh, where you are right now. I would like to thank each of you for joining us here in, in Congress Center in, in Katowice. And we'd like to say hello to those who uh, participate in our, in our meeting online. I, already, I, I hope you already ha had your fa first coffee and you are ready for the guessing game. I'm going to share with you some provocative thoughts on how cryptography may transform the existing, in, uh, existing inter internet uh, <laughs> during years to come. And please don't blame NCSC for the speculations you, you, you will see next minutes. Our topic is uh, internet in 10 years from now. So let's play the guessing game together. Next slide, please. I've planned this talk as uh, the green one. Oh, now it works. Okay, so I've planned this uh, talk as hybrid and interactive uh, meeting. Uh, it means I'd like to engage you all with live polls and quizzes. So let me start a simple setup. To attend the live polls, um, you need to open the, the website in your, uh, on your device's uh, uh, browsers. You can make it by scanning QR, uh, QR code or entering uh, URL you can see on the slide. So, so please join us with this quiz. Oh, there is one more thing important that you can ask your questions during the presentation with your devices in the, in the, on the website you, you have uh, just opened. I will try to answer all these questions when, when, if, we, if we have time at the end. Okay, ready or not, let's go to the next slide. The next slide will be the trial pool. Before we move to, to specific uh, use cases of cryptography, let's, let's take an uh, icebreaker quiz and check if our live polls uh, work properly. So, do you know uh, uh, which English word has Polish origin? Can you see? No, no, previous slide, previous slide. Next slide. But only one, one green button, please. No, doesn't work. Okay, so our live polls not, uh, are not ready yet. I think we can, may I ask you to, to make the next, next slide? No, this one, this one, previous one now. Sorry for the inconvenience, there are always such things at the beginning. Okay, sorry for the technical issues, but now it works. Ah, that's the good news. So the icebreaker quiz is, if you know, uh, the question is uh, what, what uh, okay, it's not the, the trial pool I'd, I'd like to, uh, I wanted to show you. Uh, the, the, first, the first question was the trial pool, but okay, we can skip it because of the technical issues. And I, now I'd like to ask you the retrospective question. Uh, in next slides, I will uh, try to flag problems that might be solved by cryptography in the next 10 years, but it's not so long from now. But, but let me start first, uh, ask you a retrospective question. What was HTTPS protocol adoption um, on, in the internet of the entire traffic 10 years ago? What do you think? It was 20%, 40%, 60%, or 80%? It's not a very long time ago. As you probably know, because it's always a problem that this kind of popular speeches that you, uh, you, you can't know what is the knowledge of the audience, but, but HTTPS is the secure variant of, of HTTP protocol. 
on which the web is based, HTTP HTTPS provides cryptographic security protections by carrying HTTP messages over the transport layer security protocol. Websites are also authenticated us using digital signatures. Okay, thank you for your answers. It's almost 50-50. Uh, according to Mozilla Observatory reports, in 2012, only 25% uh, of our web traffic was encrypted. Uh, uh, now it's more than 90%, and end-to-end uh, -end encrypted communications is widespread. So, touche, very nice, really nice uh, results. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, privacy is a fundamental uh, human right recognized in the UN Declarations of Human Rights the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and in many other international and national treaties. Privacy underpins human dignity and other key values, such as freedom of association and freedom of speech. It also has become one of the most important human rights issues at the modern age. Secrecy of our communications is the most obvious use case of cryptography. And, and, and the next question is, um, uh, yes, thank you. The next question is, um, do you know why uh, we experienced such a significant growth uh, from the beginning of 2014 to the early 2017? Uh, that the percentage of, of, of tra traffic using HTTPS grew from around 20 to 40. Do you know why? You can, you can put, uh, put on your devices the words you, uh, that you think it's the, what was the reason. What happened back in 2013 and 14? Any ideas? Yeah, it was not a long time ago, but two years only. But the internet was very different. Snowden, yes, yes. I believe there is there, there were two reasons, but definitely St Snowden was the was the most important. The, yeah, the former NSA contractor who revealed numerous of global surveillance programs. Snowden case revealed that intelligence has it all, all the data, all the, the metadata. The second reason you may not know mm. is, co is so-called uh, Let's Encrypt service, which was, which was a free, automated, and open certificate authority. Everyone could easily migrate their websites to HTTPS for free. And uh, now it's kind of obvious hindsight that adoption needed the actual real threat and easiness of implementation. Okay, so thank you. The next slide, please. Um, my slides are, are, are divided uh, uh, by, the, by the orange line. It's uh, uh, like, like dichotomies uh, I, I, I want to point. The, the, on the left, you can see the, the history of, hip, of cryptography. On the right, you can see the, the situation right now. And the first traces of uh, encryption can be found in Book of Jeremiah dated uh, to 6th century before Christ. And starting from Julius Caesar, cryptography was the sole domain of emperors and military forces. However, I would say that before the 70s of the previous century, cryptographic research existed only in military intelligence agencies. Crypto research in military forces is still doing well, and I think dozens of countries uh, work on building military forces in cyberspace. It was in the 90s, um, when it took over our electronic devices and the internet, and in the last 10 years we can see exponential uh, expansion of, of encryption. Uh, we use cryptography every day, every minute of it, everybody does it. We build systems uh, with security as the primary objective. But believe me, 15 years ago, cryptography was not that popular. Uh, when I was asked, uh, 15 years ago, uh, what I did for work, and I asked cryptology, people thought I was exploring crypts, like tombs, like uh, burial chambers. Yeah, it's quite funny. Now people ask how many bitcoins do I have only. None of this has uh, much in common with cryptography. So what is cryptography now? Mm, I think that cryptography is, a, is, is about securing protocols. Cryptography is often complicated and mathematically intensive, uh, but it's not a like magic. Uh, okay, uh, let me go to the next slide. 
I'm going to point. Uh, next slide, next slide. I'm going to point a few gaps that we people working in cryptography are trying to close. Once more, please, next slide. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, the example is uh, borrowed from Paul Koher, the American cryptographer, uh, from the other fields and, and move it in the middle of ages, in the Middle Ages. If we needed a surgery, you couldn't count on your physician. The only help was a local barber who would, you know, apply the, whatever he had in his resources regardless of the, the effect. So 20 years ago, cryptography was the similar situation. Practice resulted with some really bad outcomes. We could say that research was painfully divorced, divorced from practice, and theory was struggling with messiness of reality. And so the theory was not applica applicable in, in practice. It also resulted in ignoring uh, th theoretical advancements. When practice is trying uh, to stop bleeding, when academics investigate complex, not practical uh, theories. Now we are seeing more and more devices connecting to the networks, <coughs> more and more, more valuable, da valuable data we process on these devices, and we have more, more, more and more features. From the security pers person perspective, we have more targets, the reward for, for attacker grows, and complexity, we have uh, more, more vulner vulnerabilities that, we can, that can be exploited. So let me go to the next slide. The next question is if math can actually do some, something about this. So the question is, do you think in 10 years from now our critical software will be bug free? Yes or no, agree or not? I'm going to give you some time, let's say 30 seconds. Oh, no, 80%, so, okay. So we have huge majority for no. Okay, so let me tell you about uh, how we progressed with formal verification methods. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, yes, it's going up. Okay, so software bugs cause disasters, uh, like in the bank case. I hope you know this bank uh, 737 uh, case, yeah, because of the bad source code quality, we had some you know, plane crashes. Uh, as Edgar Dijkstra said, program testing can be used to show the presence of bugs, but never to show the, their absence. And, and, and again, I think we have uh, three, path, uh, three paths we can go. The one, is, uh, one is really catastrophic. We put our critical infrastructure, um, finances, transportation, TC online, and get connected with bugger computer systems. And it, and it leads to, to disasters. The second scenario uh, presupposes the technological progress is limited. The risk we are dealing with now are growing with complexity, but the value of the features we are getting are not growing at a steady rate. The value of the system is the value of features minus the risks it creates. So more cl complicated systems will become less valuable. The third possible way we can go is the, more, uh, is the, is the one I'm more excited about. Uh, uh, I, I see I see big defensive bre breakthrough that are in, uh, in, in, in these formal verification methods. In the last years, we have developed methods of formal verification and hardware verification. We can prove that a piece of code is correct in a mathematical proof, the, the, the way that mathematical proof works. The verification of the systems is done by providing a formal proof on an abstract mathematical model to the system. As you can see on the slide, the source code, any source code can be translated to, to the graphs, and the graphs can be uh, then trans translated to the first order logic, and, and satisfiability it, uh, problems can be inter iteratively solve, solved, uh, so that we can, we can prove that uh, the, the software um, has uh, features it, it should have. Uh, or we can prove also that uh, two uh, different implementations uh, do the same. Uh, they, they are in equivalent. So, uh, and, and for now, uh, cryptographic community uh, has developed a number of libraries, number of um, uh, protocols that are alre already formally verified. 
so so there is no uh, so so we can trust them. Okay, let, let me go to the protocols I've mentioned before. Next slide, please. Uh, I will fly over some specific uh, protocols. Uh, I have just said that that cryptography is about securing uh, protocols, but it's not only communications, but it's, uh, the, the, com the secure communication is not the ultimate uh, ultimate victory. Uh, what we have on the slide is the, the the case from last year. The COVID-19 pandemic was the reason for development and implementation of very specific protocol called decentralized privacy preserv preserving proximity tracing. Uh, uh, the cryptographers from uh, Ecole Polytechnic Federale de Lausanne, ETH Zurich, Katholische Universität Leuven have developed uh, this open protocol to facilit facilitate digital contact tracing of infected patients. This shows the difference. The slide shows the difference in uh, time to market periods. On the left, you have uh, adoption of uh, digital signatures protocol, which took over 30 years. And even last year grow, uh, grew up uh, by, by 20%. And on the, on the right, you have the protocol, this DP3T protocol that is uh, that was developed uh, uh, and agreed and implemented in, in billions of Apple and Google devices in only several months, three or four. And that's the progress we made. So uh, that's the, that's the uh, exponential growth I, I meant before. Uh, what, what else is to say in the context of privacy? That the rapid uh, de deployment of contact tracing apps during the pandemic has demonstrated that citiz citizens are willing to share the data for the wider public good, as long as they can trust that the information they are sharing is secure, no more information is collected that it, than uh, it is necessary, and is not used for purpose, purposes other than for which it was collected. I think it's important. Okay, let me go to the next slide. Uh, one more protocol. Uh, it's hard not to mention blockchain, mainly because the next think on the verge of wide adoption is uh, flow of value. There is a number of talks uh, in our agenda of this forum uh, on the use of blockchain. Uh, blockchain, I, I'm going to see all of them. Blockchain technology grows every day and I, be, and I believe it has reached the level beyond which there is no turning back. Decentralized finance, non-fungible tokens, blockchain-based stablecoins, tokenization of everything are going to move source of trust from the governments or central banks to the cryptographic protocols, to, the, to math. It's not only the financial system that is going to change. Every flow of value will be affected, I think. Blockchain is very simple in its essence, but effective enough to decentralize the trust. Uh, trust in blockchain derives from math, from cryptographic protocol called consensus, uh, that ensures that uh, no malicious party is able to distort the system or get access to resources it shouldn't be having. Uh, blockchain is more like execution environment for number of cryptographic protocols. Decentralized, peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, with no trusted third party, no, no central point of failure or, or, or governance. Okay, next slide, please. I will try to fly over uh, three more protocols, but really, really very shortly. Uh, uh, you can see on the slide the zero-knowledge proof uh, protocol. One second, please. In its most basic um, sense, a zero knowledge proof can be thought as a um, of a protocol through which a digital authentication process can be facilitated without use of any passwords or other sensitive data. So there is a prover and verifier in this game, and and prover can verify can claim some. Uh, component of, of its identity, of her identity, like 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 she's uh, uh, 18, more than 18 years old, or she earns something, uh, and, and the prover is, is able to prove the claim to the verifier, but not uh, but without revealing the actual data, without re revealing uh, the actual age, and the verifier is able to to verify to the, verify the the prover's, uh, for example, age or, or other component of identity, uh, without. Uh, Seeing the without having possessing storing the actual knowledge about the the person, and, and I believe it, it, uh, the, the the zero knowledge proof, proofs uh, protocols are widely adopted for now in in, in uh, blockchain communities. 
There is one more interesting fa fact about zero knowledge proofs. Uh, the first zero knowledge proof uh, protocol was invented uh, by Shafi Goldwasser in 1985. And it was dusting on the shelf for many years. Uh, now, when we have the execution environment, I mentioned the, uh, this is the previous slide, the blockchain, uh, and we can run smart uh, smart contracts. We can uh, run code, we run protocols. I mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, zero knowledge proof has eventually found a multitude of uses, and it's not only about the transaction anonymity. Uh, it's much more about uh, scalability of, of blockchains. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, I think we have uh, uh, two more protocols to, 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 to I would like to tell you about. The next one is uh, fully homomorphic encryption, yeah, because now it's uh, it's getting practical. After dozens of years of development, now it's a practical uh, pr protocol. What does it mean that crypto provides provides secrecy uh, in at computation? The purpose of homomorphic encryption is to allow computation on encrypted data. In mathematics, homomorphic describes the transformation of one data set into another while, while preserving relationships between elements in both sets. So the data remain, remains confidential while it is processed, enabling useful tasks to be accomplished. So, the, so we have the, uh, the left side that, can, uh, that possesses some data, and, uh, and uh, let's say Alice uh, encrypts the data and sends the encrypted versions to, to the server or somewhere, and the server can compute on this data without decrypting the data, and return the uh, the the, uh, the result, and the result on the side of Alice uh, can be decrypted, and, and it is uh, equal to the to the computation uh, uh, Alice could do without you know fully homomorphic encryption. So so Alice can now uh, um, outsource the computation uh, to the third party without uh, uh, decrypting the without uh, giving the server uh, the actual data. Mm. Uh, last month, what is interesting about fully homomorphic encryption? I think that last month, or maybe two months ago, two months, months ago Apple has unveiled its plans to use uh, its extensive power to fight child pornography. I hope you have heard about this, that, that, that uh, Apple uh, wanted to scan our, our photos and our uh, devices and, and detect uh, ch uh, child pornography. Even though they, ha they had really good intentions, the company's actual uh, plan has provided dozens of reasons to oppose this idea, uh, privacy reasons. Since we all despise the control, uh, the fully homomorphic encryption uh, was the solution. Apple could run AI-based algorithms, porn detection algorithms on encrypted files and without privacy threat. It is called privacy-preserving machine learning. And now is the question for you, to you. Do you think it could be uh, it could be something people would understand and uh, and and diminish their privacy concerns what do you think do you think that people could accept that that their photos are being scanned but in an encrypted way oh we have 50-50 what can I say? I have to say I agree <laughs> with all of you. <laughs> yeah, I surely don't know. I, I mean, I, I, uh, it's, it's, it's the hardest part, what people think about, because it's not easy to, 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 to explain what is fully homomorphic encryption. So I, I'm not sure if people would accept the, 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 the explanation. OK, so yeah. Uh, no, too hard to understand. Yes, I share, I, share, I share your opinion. I think. Okay, thank you. Let's go to the to the next slide. It's the last uh, protocol I'd like to tell you about. Uh, I can't say that the protocol is uh, practical right now. Uh, I think it's you know under development, under research. Uh, this one is a high bar. It's called uh, indistinguishable obfuscation. The obfuscation can act like a compiler that turns one program into another one, the obfuscated one. Informally, obfuscation hides the implementation of program while still allowing users to run it. So there is one side that has the algorithm, but uh, it wants to uh, hide the algorithm. So kind of encrypt the algorithm and share to the other side. And the other side can run the algorithm, uh, get the results, uh, the same results that, 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 was, that was, was to be uh, 
uh, computed uh, without you know encryption the algorithm uh, so that the the server side uh, does not know uh, what algorithm it, 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 it runs right so so that's the idea about crypto obfuscation obfuscation may may look a bit silly but uh, believe me it is surprisingly useful for now it's uh, uh, it's not use, uh, it's not practical yet, as, as I mentioned. Uh, as always, at the beginning, it's too slow and obfuscated programs are too big. But I think we will take uh, fully homomorphic encryption path, and after hard work, it is operational and useful. Okay, uh, that was the last protocol I, uh, I, 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 I wanted to mention. Next slide, please. The next slide is... Uh, about that there is a number of protocols and mechanisms, cryptography mechanisms, I'm not going to tell you about, but the point is the discipline itself grows exponentially for some reasons. And second thing is that the new systems are founded uh, on more and more advanced mathematics. It's uh, uh, every year it's harder to understand them. I'm an assistant supervisor of PhD student that works on the obfuscation problem. And to be honest, I can barely see the light uh, in her research. I can't say that I'm uh, well familiar with what Ola does in her work, because it's that complicated. Uh, the last one, the last thing I, I'd like to tell you is that the new protocols start slow and eventually become practical, but never, ne they are never, you know, uh, practical at the beginning. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Believe me, I'm going. Uh, there is a point on the, of the end of the presentation. There is a, one more one more quiz to you. Um, huh. Although this information has existed for a long time, the recent proceedings in social media have made it a popular topic in public discourse, also know, known uh, under the term fake news. Um, Fake news is political motivated, uh, but uh, as part of information operations, they in turn can serve as a method of hybrid warfare. Nevertheless, because uh, it often draws much, much attention, there are also financial motives for spreading fa fake news. And tell me, what do you think? In 10 years from now, this information and fake news will, be, uh, will not be a problem anymore? Do you agree or not? Or the fake news will be an even bigger problem than it is today? Okay, so majority for no, 82%. Yeah, I think we can go to the next slide. We have really uh, good answer. Uh, that's, I think, the most important slide. I mean, I, I'm going to this slide. I, I, the protocols I've mentioned before uh, are the components of this so-called web 3.0 idea. So I don't have the uh, ultimate answer for the previous question. I think it's possible that next generation of the internet solves the problem, but hard, it's hard to be sure. Uh, but the ownership uh, revolution and sign everything approach uh, are most common remedies for the problem, proposed remedies. And, and this is where, where we are going. I mean, uh, and to, to, sum, to summarize my long story, uh, going from the bottom, left corner of this big bank analogy we have a, a singularity phase is a kind of ir irregular behavior with infinite density and temperature easily controlling the flow of information strange times before the internet and then we have the big bang the, the birth of the internet universe i hope you some of you remember you know the the, the static html sites and and uh, and communicators of these times uh, uh, static one direction content uh, regime where to uh, where the laws of the internet physics uh, has started as we understand them today uh, uh, today mm. after the exponential growth started with the electromagnetic force uh, a few more years denser regions of the uniformly distributed matter gravitationally attracted nearby matter and and thus it grew even denser this is big tech's centralized world the web 2.0 this slide is the, the, the dichotomy of this slide is uh, divided you know again with, with the orange line but now it's more rounded 
So the theory suggests that the first quasars and galaxies formed about a billion years after the Big Bang, and since then, larger structures uh, such as galaxy crust clusters have been forming. I would say we stand on the threshold of the new galaxy formation. For now, we live in a data monarchy. So-called Web 3.0 take us all to the democracy. Blockchain, understood as an execution environment for the protocols, uh, the centralized protocols, with its imminent features like immu 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 immutability, thank you, will enable a shift of power from, co uh, from corporations to uh, communities. I said communities or communists? Communities, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean uh, communists. Uh, new protocols are going to revolutionize flow of value, identity, and much more. Uh, what await us, uh, awaits us is not only the technological transforma transformation, but first and foremost, change of Internet's nature and the way we think. From the companies and, and big techs to the platforms and protocols, from trust based on uh, so-called uh, third parties to a consensus-based uh, trust model, where consensus means specific game theory based proof. Uh, from centralized identity providers, as we know now, from reputation scoring and fact checking, to entire new level of personal and legal self-sovereign identity with verifiable credentials, with zero knowledge proof I mentioned before, with, um, uh, it creates an entirely new trust model. And what is more important, most important from granting big techs, let me cite the fa Facebook's policy privacy, non-exclusive, transferable, sub-licensable, sub uh, royalty-free, worldwide license, which means that we are a miserable piece of data uh, can, that can be sold or used in any way to actually uh, take ownership, ownership of our data. Take it back. Facebook is uh, in, in many in many ways like 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 Exxon of our times times when data is is new oil it's an indispensable tool that's a part of everyone's life a tool that everyone despises it's like it doesn't matter how many gallons Exxon uh, drops in the ocean uh, or how outrageous Facebook privacy privacy violations are because to most people internet. Where else web, uh, does Web uh, 3.0 takes us? Uh, from value flow, flow based on dominance to the new economy with millions of interstate, exchangeable, programmable units of account or tokens, I think. From legislative initiatives, procedures, procedures uh, privacy policies written on paper to automated smart contracts. E-voting is a perfect example. I didn't put it on my slides, but I believe uh, um, my seven years old son will never vote uh, with paper ballots. It's absolutely doable in, in the, the technology we have right now. Okay, so next slide, please. The next quiz. I think I need more water. Okay, so uh, I know that my speculations were a bit far going, far reaching. But on the other hand, when looking, looking at it, from the future perspective. The situation is quite absurd. Uh, what do you think? What is the most ridiculous for you? Uh, the first one is, uh, the first um, uh, question is, uh, the first possible answer is financial system running on COBOL but scripting on mainframes. I'm not sure if uh, uh, everyone knows what is COBOL. COBOL is you know, the, the, the language, programming language from late 50s. Uh, but but still use, uh, still being used in uh, financial sector. The second uh, second possible answer is uh, Google threatening to withdraw search engine from Australia over the government uh, uh, attempt to make the giant pay for selling local publishers' content. And again, I don't know you, you have heard about the situation, but you know the Google News is selling the content of local publishers, and and he, he, they are not sharing the income with the with the content providers. So after the Australian government uh, tried to make uh, Google to, to pay for the content, they, they threatened uh, the, the, to withdraw the search engine from Australia. Uh, the, the third possible answer is controversies, uh, attempts to overturn the, the, the US democracy presiden presidential elections. That's another, another interesting fact that two out of two last elections were uh, controversial, let's say. 
Oh, there was a party who, you know, tried to over, overturn the, the, the results. And, and yes, and the fourth uh, possible answer is the speaker is paranoid, it's time to call a shrink. For those who does not agree with ABC. Uh, okay, so I think the, that the election system is the most uh, recognized problem as being absurd or ridiculous. Yeah, I think, yeah, for me too, for me too. And there is zero for the shrink? Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, that was the, that was the shape of the internet I can uh, imagine in the next 10 years. Uh, I have one more slide, uh, which is important to me, uh, but it does not, uh, you know, tell us anything about the, about the internet in 10 years from now. Uh, I don't want to say it uh, sounds pathetic, but it is about the uh, moral character of uh, our work. I believe that crypto community faces fundamental problems to fight for ordinary human being, no matter if you are objectified by big techs, for which the sole purpose is to earn more money on our data on us, or by politicians who degrade, uh, degrade people for, for, own, for own reasons. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's in the real world or in the, in the internet. And, and I'd like to share with you some uh, words from Philip uh, Rogaway, recognized as one of the you know, cryptographic superheroes. He wrote a, a very famous article in, back in 2015 after the Snowden revelations. Um, and he has said that cryptography uh, rearranges power. It configures who can do what from what. This makes cryptography an inherently political tool and it confers on the field an intrinsically moral dimension. I plead for reinvention of our disciplinary culture to attend not only the puzzles uh, and math, but also uh, to the societal, societal implications of our work. Okay, and, and I think it's more, I can feel that it's more important every day uh, for me. Uh, I'd like to thank every single person who sees another human being with, as stated in, in preamble of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a recognition of internet dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights. Thank you very much. The next slides uh, will be about your questions. If you would like to, uh, it's a Q&A &A session. If, if, if someone wants to ask me anything, I think we have a few more minutes to answer these questions. Even 10 minutes, 10 minutes, I think. Okay, no questions? Maybe, maybe from the internet, from online participants? Please do not hesitate to ask your questions. I'll do my best to answer them all. Sorry for the technical issues and sorry for being that nervous. Okay. So we have something divided, divided. Someone wrote divided. It's not the, that's not the question. Okay. In, in, in your opinion, internet will be one or divided? I think that was the question. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I can, I, I can understand the question very well. I, uh, I don't think, that I, the, the claim of this forum is Internet United, as you could see on, in the materials. Uh, and I don't think that Internet in 10 years from now will be united as we know it right now. Uh, I think we, it will be um, um, some kind of divided. But it's not the divided. It's not the balkanization of the internet. I mean, this is a possible scenario, but I, I don't think it's the basic scenario. Uh, I think that there will be a third way. So, no, not internet united, not the balkanization of the internet, but the, uh, some kind of separation of many networks, but with uh, preservance of communications between the between the bubbles, so so that we can communicate with uh, with, communi with, with with different communities by by separate protocols, by separate applications, uh, 
but not as united as, as we know it today, I think. That, that would be my question. That, that would be my answer. Uh, would you prefer internet to be shut down? No, absolutely. Okay, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I don't blame, I don't know, big techs for uh, for fake news uh, uh, propagation. No, no, no. It's a, I know it's a human nature. I, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. But the, the new channels, the, the algorithms that that works, uh, the algorithms that work for 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 big techs in Facebook, in Instagram, in Twitter. I don't know many others. Uh, uh, they are to uh, to take our uh, attention, to to make us spend as much time as we uh, as possible. So 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 the feed we can see in our social media is uh, uh, makes us more divided. Yeah, and and, and the big techs uh, do it for the uh, for the purpose of earning money only. Only so 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 I don't blame for them for uh, for 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 human nature. But I do blame them, them for uh, algorithms that makes us uh, more divided than we possibly are, I think. What is the next question? Uh, uh, how do you how do you hard bake human rights into future internet governance? Um, yeah, yeah, I think that the 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 answer is web 3.0. I, I think that uh, if we have the if we have this uh, blockchain-based go governance, um, the the, um, the notions I didn't mention, like uh, the centralized autonomous organizations, uh, we will get somewhere to uh, somewhere somewhere else. The the human rights will be uh, uh, will depend on uh, uh, more decentralized. Communities not by, not depend um, they they will not depend only on the big techs uh, sole purpose of earning money. Uh, how to make us united when everybody tries to divide us? Ah, that's a great, great question, enormous question. How to make us united when everybody tries to uh, divide us? Not everybody. I think it's it's big techs. Uh, so 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 in this new kind of new, new internet with with this. Uh, uh, when we take uh, ownership of our data back with the protocols I've mentioned, with zero knowledge proofs, with homomorphic encryption, with all the stuff, uh, with blockchain-based go ba based governance, uh, we will uh, we will get. Uh, I'm not sure if we if we will get less divided. We will uh, function in different communities. The communities will be divided, but uh, uh, yes, we will be exposed for more uh, diverse information. I think. And it, it 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 will make us less divided in this political sense. Yes, you cannot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can I can hear you. Yes, I I think they they um, amplify the the algorithms so amplify the, the the human nature of of yeah. Of hatreds. Yeah, so my, my question is very simple that as you said that the big techs are trying to divide us, so there is a trade off. If the governments try to control or regulate the big tech and we are giving more power to our state and government, so what do you think in the next 10 years who is going to control big tech? The governments or big techs are going to work in a very autonomous manner. So, uh, where do you find your uh, a balance between the more powerful big tech versus a more powerful state? Okay, okay. Uh, as a, as a, as a, I need to answer on, on a few questions. So, so the first, uh, uh, don't get me wrong. I, I didn't say that big techs are, are, are dividing us. Uh, I, I say that they have only one purpose of earning money and getting our attention okay so so that's a very different thing okay so that's the first important thing the second thing is that this as i believe this uh, uh web 3.0 uh, web 3.0 uh, new internet will be uh, uh, it, it's going to change our the, the way we think it is more about the protocol it's it's not going to be um a uh, single server or single algorithm that 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 is going to decide about everything so if, if the if the power is the, in the protocols in cryptography in math then it's very different uh, situation you know so the so the 
So the answer would be that um, uh, the governance, as you think about it right now, is to make you know to make policies, political uh, you know legislations, to restrict the algorithms of Facebook. I don't believe it happened. I don't believe. Uh, I don't believe that you know that uh, that, the, that we can uh, enforce some regulations on them because it's against against their interests, right? They want to end the money, and and that's the end of the story. So. So, so the point is that in this new internet, we will have protocols and decentralization that gives us a kind of no gover governance approach. So, so okay. So, do you, do you know what I mean? So, we, I don't believe the governance. I don't believe that uh, that, uh, for example, you know, we have GDPR in Europe, right? And and so that we uh, Facebook cannot sell our data to third parties without our knowledge and 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 consent, right? And but they did, yeah. We had, you know, the, we have Facebook papers. We have the Cambridge Analytica case. They did. So, so my point is that if someone technically can to see the data, sell the data, do something with the data, um, he will do it. But if if we have a different level of 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 uh, of, um, of uh, security, different level of confidentiality, of secrecy. So we have. Uh, math-based protocols, and that that they cannot look into the data, but cannot on on you know on mathematical level, not on the procedural level or legislation level. Okay, so that's the huge difference. I mean, okay, did I answer your question? Thank you. Okay, do we have something more? In your opinion, internet will be more safe for the next gen people in a sense of hate speech. Is there a way that cryptography will help? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think that I have answered the previous question. It's pretty much the same. Yeah, I think that the the, the, the the internet will be more safe place in in sense of hate speech. Maybe maybe I didn't uh, point it very you know. Uh, I can say it once more because uh, right now uh, in, sci in, sci in scientific papers uh, people say that uh, to fight this information. We need to uh, have some kind of uh, sign everything approach. So, for for example, right now we need we, we use digital signatures for for signing documents, uh, you know, in uh, administration, something like this, right? But if we have, uh, if you use, use MetaMask, for example, in if, I don't know if there is someone from the blockchain community, but. Uh, you can um, you can sign everything, right? You can uh, you can sign your tweet, you can sign your uh, photo, which is called NFT. Uh, you can sign everything. If we have a kind of mechanism that we sign everything, then the, then the um, algorithms that uh, um, uh, that uh, assess uh, the risk of uh, fake news. Uh, uh, would be better, would be more efficient, right? So the so the so 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 people say that that uh, yeah that the digital signature is going to improve uh, our security in context of fake news detection, but I don't believe it's you know the um, I don't believe it's going to happen right now because there is no interoperability between the worlds. I mean the. Uh, you can sign uh, with single signature your tweet and, and your Facebook post. So, so in the new in the new internet, I believe that this interoperability will be on a very different level. So we can uh, share easily the data between uh, many platforms, many applications, uh, preserving our our um, identity, but not identity as we think of identity right now. The you know the identity with ID card or something like this. The, the, the component of identity we would like to share. Uh, that, is the, that was the, on the slide with zero knowledge proofs. That uh, the identity we uh, we want to share in in in, in the selected uh, area. Yeah. Oh, I definitely need more water. Okay. So, um, do you believe cryptographic community can resist pressure pressure from governments to create backdoors? Very good question. That was the um, that was the that was the last slide. That was the last last slide. Uh, yeah. Mm. And again, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be, you know, like uh, uh, moral uh, person who can 
tell you what to do or not what to do. I, I think that uh, we have some people in the community that um, work on this, on, on, the, on the moral character of our work. And the Philip Rogaway is, is the best example, as I uh, read the citation from him. So, so I think that, yes, cryptographic community, you know, there are people. At the end of the story, there are people, and we, we know we know that the you know the Snowden story. We know uh, that uh, dozens of countries work on uh, cyber warfare right now, and and they hire a lot of cryptographers. And and yes, and some of them will resist, and some will, uh, some, some will not. But I don't believe that uh, gov governments are uh, are able are are in such power to uh, to enforce these backdoors, to be honest. I think it was possible in the uh, 20th century when we have this, I don't know if uh, this Paul Zimmerman uh, case, the man who invented uh, privacy uh, PGP protocol so that you could, uh, in the 90s, encrypt your email. And, and that, that was time that uh, government could interfere in the process i think but not now not not uh, the, there's uh, we reached the level there is no turning back okay i think uh, uh do you think the bitcoin will replace traditional money oh uh, um no i don't i don't the, the quick answer is i don't but i do believe that um i try to explain it uh, a few times, and I'll try once more. I do believe that the, the, the flow of value will be democratized. I mean, it will be decentralized. I mean, uh, that um, the world where, where, where the value is based on uh, the dominance, you know, the, I, I, I don't want to go into, into the details and, you know, the, to tell you about the shape of financial system and the role of US dollar or something. But uh, for now, we have, uh, dominance-based value flow in the world. And I believe that uh, technology, cryptography, the protocols, consensus-based protocols, the proof-based protocols are going to change the value, the, the flow of the values, value. And, and, and so that the value will no longer be dependent on one specific person or authority, okay? So, uh, and I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be Bitcoin, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be some kind of protocol. Yeah, yeah, I do believe it. Um, uh, there are many crime on the internet. How about in the next 10 years, will it, uh, will it be increased? Uh, okay, uh, yes, yes, the short answer is yes. Yeah, I know, you have three more minutes. Uh, that was the last question, okay? So, uh, about crime on the internet. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, with the decentralization, with the, uh, with the uh, growing number of separate communities, I think that, you know, it's, a, it's like a knife. We have, in, in Web 3.0, we will get just a better knife. And the, the better knife uh, could be, can be used in, in good intentions and in bad intentions. So, so, so I think that, that, that the, question, uh, the answer to the question is yes. Yes, we will see uh, uh, increasing crimes in, in the internet, yeah. yeah no, that was not the positive accent at the end. But okay, uh, thank you for your questions. Very, very impressive, thank you. Thank you once more.